Okay, look, 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 sorry. Look, chapter 9, verse 1. Just go there and stay there. Praise the Lord. Last week, what, what were we talking about last week? Anyone can remember, please help me. You said? Hallelujah. Can you name any ministry of the minister you can remember? Anyone? Good tidings. Who had comfort? One, 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 one. Let's do revision quickly, 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 quickly. This side. Some people were in church last week. Said evangelism. Who? Okay, they're in the spirit. Jesus. They can't even hear what I'm saying. Maybe they're looking at me like, who is asking you to talk to us? I'm not scared of your face. <laughs> Choir, which one? Which one? Which one? They say evangelism. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was going to say Holy Spirit now. <laughs> Everything that is spiritual. Broken hearted, okay. Meek and humble. Mm -hmm. This side. The captive is free. Huh? Eh? Demons? You said what? The morning. Oh, okay, okay. Say so dead demons. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, some people don't know how to laugh. Oh. See, uh, tell your neighbor I'm not the cause of your problem. <laughs> ah. Life is a free word. Laugh anyhow, laugh anytime you want. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases. Praise the Lord. Verse 2. And he sent them. Tell your neighbor, and he sent them. I want to preach today. Last week we spoke on ministers of God, the ministry of the minister. Today I want to preach on ministers of God, the other series, just the, be part of it, the assignment of the minister. Remember last week, yeah? We said we, has, we, we have been specific on dealing on people who we are ministering to. Can you remember? Hallelujah. If you listen very well, that was our major focus last week, and we dealt extensively on people whom we are to minister to. Praise the Lord. And the message is out. You can go there for those of us who are a bit lost. Amen. But I will do a quick recap to help us to, you know, come together so that we can, because it's a bit connected with what I'm about to preach today. Um, like, like some of us began to mention, we are to minister to the brokenhearted, to minister to those who are mourning, to minister to those who are, uh, the, who are, who are meek, those who are humble. We are to minister to different sects of people. But... Uh, I found that from my observation that many people don't understand that they are actually ministers of God. Few understand that they are Christians. Few understand that they have a faith which they support and believe. But a lot of Christians don't understand that just coming into Christendom has made you a minister already. And last week, even last week, I began to speak on the fact that God has anointed you in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. And God has anointed you and ordained you, first of all, the Bible says to preach, but we are not going there yet. I, I just want to stress the fact that as a called believer of God, if you have been called by God to serve him, you are actually a minister. And the word minister is not really a big term as though maybe it's something you are thinking. Uh, for you to be a minister, you have to be a pastor or to be a bishop or to be an apostle or to be something in that rank, something connected with, you know, holding the mic and speaking to people. Uh, it's not all of that. There is a place for that, that, that assignment. But to be a minister simply means to serve. Pastor Dr. Gibson began to speak on um, um, the servanthood. And last week he also spoke about ministry. You want to understand that for you to be a minister, you have to know how to serve. Tell your neighbor, for you to be a minister, you have to know how to serve. Ministering is simply service. To be a minister is as simple as saying to be a servant. 
We, we serve in a kingdom where men are called to be kings, but before you are called to be a king, you have to understand the principle and the spirit of servanthood. Please, I want you to understand your background and your foundation. These are some of the foundational teachings of Christianity. So it will be important for you to really get this fact and understand what God is saying to you. Every believer, every person who have given their life to Jesus Christ of Nazareth is a minister. What it means is that every person who have given their life to Jesus have a service to offer in the kingdom. There is nobody in the kingdom who is idle. There is nobody in the kingdom who is doing nothing. There is nobody in the kingdom who you have just been called to come to church and sit down. There is nobody in the kingdom who have just been called to not do anything. There is an assignment for every person in the house of God. Say with me, there is an assignment for every person in the house of God. It will help you to understand the fact that coming to church is, is more or less a teaching of, 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 of ministers, a teaching of servants, where the master comes to give instruction to people and say, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do this and you have to do that. It's, it's, it's not just trying to fill up a seat. It's coming to take instructions. Like the Bible speaks of Martha and Mary and one sat at the feet of Jesus and was taking instructions of her life. So to be an effective servant, you have to even understand who the master is. So there is no master who do not have a, 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 a servant. I don't want to use the word slave. But I, I, let, me, let me continue with the word ma, a minister. The Bible says of us, it says we have been called to be ministers. I, I, maybe we are going to go there in our teaching. I'm just laying the foundation so that we understand. So if, I'm, I'm, if I am a Christian, if I am someone who have given their life to Christ, I am a minister. I have been called to serve. I have an ability. There is a grace in me for for me to serve are we clear on that so if you don't understand that you have to serve it's going to be you're going to look a bit useless in the house of god second timothy the bible says that a man who is called the bible says god will purge him so that he will be useful for the master use you can actually stay in God's house and become useless. I want to stress on the fact because there are some people that think, oh, um, I don't need to be in a department for me to be in a church. You know, I don't need to do anything. I can just be a visiting member or do something. Or, you know, I, I don't need to contribute my effort to the house of God. You know, it, it's just me. I'm a, a, I'm a shy person. You know, I... These kind of things, they're, they're not for me. Some people have the talent. God has blessed them with grace, but they just be like, you know, um, I, I just want to stay low-key. You can actually have the talent and be useless. Pastor, I've said it this way, that someone who, um, um, how, how did he say it again? A, a, a man who is hardworking will beat a man who is who has a talent and is not hard working i'm just trying to paraphrase it but that's not the exact way he says if, if you understand what i'm saying someone who is putting effort to what they are doing and you who have the talent for example to play the drums and you are not interested for example and somebody began begins to learn and invest time and energy god is saying that that person is more useful to him than even you who is just having the talent and not doing anything I've come today to challenge our heart. That is my primary focus, to challenge us to serve God. Sorry, before I continue, um, the plane has kicked off already, but I want to apologize. Amen, please. Say, Pastor is apologizing. Tell your neighbor. Say it to, don't meet me after church and say, you are talking to me. Say it to, say, Pastor is apologizing. Okay. Some people are murmuring it now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go to verse 1. The Bible says, Then he called his 12 disciples together. Jesus Christ called his 12 disciples together. Then he did something. Jesus gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. 
in verse 2, quickly, we are going to come back to this now. And he sent them to preach. But before he sent them, he actually called them. But before God actually decided to even send them, he gave them power over sickness and disease. If you go to Isaiah 6 to 1, please walk with me quickly. Isaiah 6 to 1 verse 1, quickly, 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 quickly. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Bible says he has anointed me to preach. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Now I want you to shift this and go to verse 2. He has done all these things. He said, go to verse 3. I'm looking for something. Go to verse 4. Hey, today is today. Hey, God. I, I must preach this thing. Go to verse 1. Yes, I said I must preach it. I must preach what is, is in my spirit. Go, 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 quickly. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach he says he has sent me that was what i was looking for now if you go to luke chapter 9 the bible says that jesus called the disciples as he, he was speaking to them he said he gave them power what the word was trying to say was that the spirit of the lord came upon them there was an endowment of the spirit of god to help them to cast out devils to heal the sicknesses but Jesus never sent them first because he understood that every assignment needs power. You need an ability. There's supposed to be a grace. There's supposed to be something God is supposed to endure you with. Never go out on an assignment without the power of God in you. You may have a calling of God upon your life. God would have said something. I want you to do this. I want you. This is my assignment for you. But you need an empowerment from the spirit of God. For you to get an embark on that, as, on that assignment. Jesus Christ was about to send them. But he said I cannot send these people. He called them first of all. Like he has called us to be Christians. But he did one more thing. He gave them power. A man who is just sent on an assignment without power will lack the ability to deliver that assignment. Even if you have the assignment, you need power behind the assignment. There are a lot of obstacles to stop you from ministering to God. The Bible says in the New Testament, it says, let he that minister, minister with the ability that God has given him. In other words, with the power which God has given him. I know there are so many of us, there are people, young people in ministry, who are, who are hungry and they want to launch out, they want to do a lot of things for God. They want to preach. Some of them want to even open churches. Some of them are, they, 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 they just feel something, but... If God has not sent you, there is no need to start anything. Wait until God sends you before you can actually embark on, on any other assignment. If God is sending you, he's going to give you power to do what he has sent you. So, hallelujah. Listen to me. If you, are, if you have an assignment over your life, if you have something you know God has called you to do, God will first give you the power before he sends you. Remember last week we were speaking about the people whom God we are going to, was going to send you to. But today I'm not concerned about the people whom I'm sending you to. I'm concerned about the assignment, the thing what God is, is, is trying to do in your life. But before God even send you to those people, he's going to first of all call you to himself. God is going to now give you power over devils. The way we are looking at me is, is, is hey, serious. It's for that mass. Hey. Say for that mass. For that mass. Do, you the, do, do you know elective mass? How many of us know elective mass here? For that mass. Okay. Well, well. For that mass. Who, who did for that mass here? See, nobody did for that mass. It's showing in your face. You can't understand the pressure here. Praise. Okay, people did for that mass. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, no, not mathematics, so. Okay, you, 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 I hear you, sir. There is, there is, I'm trying to say something that if you are going to actually launch out and go out for what God has designed you to be, 
every one of us in this room, every one of us in this place have been called of God to do something. I did not say you have been called to do everything. There is something that is attached to your life for you to do. There is a time factor that is attached to it. But the person who is going to start the time is Jesus Christ himself. The Bible says he was the one who sent them. He understood. You remember he told them that they should go to the lordship of Israel. That was our last week ministry. But he was giving them a specific assignment. And he, he told them that there is a time. He said, I, I want to call you people now and send you people somewhere. But you cannot do this assignment by yourself. You need power. The same way you cannot just minister anything to people. You Listen, even if you have a song to sing right now and you finish writing a song, there needs to be a power behind what you are saying for it to make sense to the same people whom you have been sent to. Because there are things that are going to stop what you are saying from happening. You need the power of God even when you are trying to minister the same. You had an instruction from God. But the same instruction has a time that it needs to be established. The Bible says even, even, even John the Baptist, there was a time for his appointment. Even Jesus Christ did not just come out. He, he, he waited from 12 years to when he was 30. We never heard anything about this person called Jesus Christ. And the Bible says when he went into the wilderness, he came out with power because an assignment without power is useless. There is no need talking to people if you don't have power. Praise the Lord. You have to understand... Uh, Quickly, I want us to not just go there, but I want to say something in five minutes. That there is a level of preparation as a minister you have to embark on. Say level of preparation. If you are a minister of God, we are going to go to um, prepare Exodus 28 verse 35 for me. In the Old Testament, before the priest even come out to minister, there are, there, there, there are certain garments he must put on. You don't just rush out and do anything for God. I, I'm, I'm really against the fact that you just do anything and fix it into the spirit and think that uh, because I'm doing it, God has to be involved in it. You can be working for God and God has sacked you. Let me give you a scripture proof. The Bible says those people that will come and, and, and they will say, Lord, Lord, we actually healed in your name. We actually did things in your name. And Jesus Christ will say, depart from me. I do not know you. But they actually worked for him. And he did not sack them. So there is a modus operandi to work for God. God, this is the highest assignment on the planet earth. The ministers of God. For you to be a minister is big deal. It's bigger than anything you can think about. It's bigger than being a president. You are working for Jesus. Just being an usher alone is bigger than being a president of a country. In the eyes of God. I'm telling you. Many people don't prepare. Many people don't prepare to minister. Jesus Christ spent almost 18 years trying to prepare for three and a half years in ministry. He spent almost 18 years preparing for three and a half. How many years do you have to live on earth? What matters is not even the best day of your life. It's actually the death day of your life. Because if you, are, if you are supposed to die at 35 and for example you are 33, that means you have just two years left. So what is more important is your death day, not just even your birthday. So that even makes me more, I, I want to even prepare some more for this thing called my assignment. Because you are actually useless on earth until you find what you have been meant to do on earth. I'm telling you the truth. M let, me, let me introduce the fact that of course you know, your career is not even your assignment. You have to understand what have I been made to do on earth. Nothing is important than that. 
A man is a walking corpse until he finds the reason for his existence. If you don't know what you have been meant to do, you are, you are as you, even the devil knows what he's supposed to be doing on earth. The Bible says the devil is rolling around like a rolling lion, looking for whom he may devour. He has an assignment to devour people. Waking up in the morning and sleeping at night is not an assignment. Ah, if you, you, of course, of course, of course, we are all young here. But you must understand that if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are destined for greatness and you want to live among the great in your time and your generation, remember if God be, and a God will be, of course, the Bible says that we are going to actually live long. He promises us long life. So I'm not even saying that you're going to die early. What happens when you are 50 and 40 and 60? Would there be a regret and you are still searching for your assignment? What is God telling me to do in my life now? What is my assignment? What, what is my assignment? What is my assignment on the face of this earth? <sighs> the, the assignment of your ear is to hear. Everything God made has an assignment. Your nose is to smell. Your mouth is to, is to eat. Your tongue is to taste. Your, your mouth is to eat something. Your eyes is to see. There, there is an assignment for everything God made. You have to have an assignment. There is a reason for your existence. There is, there is nobody who is living on the surface of the earth. If you are still existing, it's because there is something you have to do on this earth. That is why God is still keeping you. For the day you complete your assignment, you go back to him. The Bible says when those people finish, they return back to the master and they began to say, we casted devils in your name. We did this in your name. Meaning that after your assignment comes a day of accountability. So what are you going to give God account of? If I send you a message and I say, for example, um, sister, please, I want you to um, tell this brother this. And you tell him, and you come back to me and ask you, what is his response? I gave you an assignment to fulfill. So why I gave you the assignment is because it was relevant to you. And if you don't know that assignment, you are as useless as anything. I can use anything. But because I know okay, there is something you can say to him that will allow him to agree with what I want. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. But when I give you that assignment, it makes you even more useful to me. Because I need a response. So with God is the same thing. God has placed different problems upon the earth. And he has called, for example, Emmanuel. There is this thing you have to do. Don't die without doing it. Your assignment is not your decision. It's a discovery. You have to look for it. You have to find it by the help of God. It's not a decision. You don't decide. You don't decide to start making clothes now. It's a discovery. It's, it's God's plan that will make man to reconcile back to his creator. Because only him knows the, 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 the platform of your life. Only him understands what you are supposed to do. So for you to understand that there is a God, you must come back to him. It's a strategy to make all men know that he's alive. Praise the Lord. Uh, this woman looking at me. Is he entering? Praise the Lord. Um, quickly, the, the first assignment of a minister... Uh, somebody say hey. Mark chapter 10 verse 43 I will come back to this please okay let's start with this please thank you the Bible says and it's praise the Lord yes and it shall be upon Aaron to minister say to minister touch someone say to minister touch the other person say to minister say pastor is talking to you to minister Shake your neighbor, say to minister. minister. Hey, some people are dodging shaking. <laughs> Don't shake some people. They have not eaten. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. To minister means to serve. 
The first and primary assignment of a minister, whether you're in the choir, you're in the usher, you're in the department, you're dancing, you are, you, are, you, are, you are technical, whatever, your first assignment, primary assignment is to serve. Say, to, say with me to serve. The Bible says, and it shall be upon a man called Aaron. Say Aaron. Uh, Aaron was the brother of Moses. And remember that the brother of Moses, God was speaking to Moses and said, this person by your side is going to be your mouthpiece. Do you remember? Hey. Hi. Some things are really interesting. If you are going to, I'm telling you the truth, if you are going to go find life, You can't, you can't achieve anything in life, anything, except you are a minister. I'm not talking about village um, prosperity. I'm not talking about something that you are, you, you, you are competing to be the best local champion in your area. And you are looking at somebody who is driving a car and you are saying before 2025, my own will come. First of all, the time has a problem. I'm not even talking about being married. Oh, goodness. I'm talking about a, a, having a long life impact upon your generation. We are not trained in this place to just eat bread and butter only. We are trained to impact. The, we are the future of our generation. In 40, 50 years to come, these are the people that are going to be in offices. These are the people that are going to be in ministry. So it's good that you understand that a man has to be a minister first before he thinks of greatness. God comes to Aaron through Moses. He's speaking and he's saying, Aaron... I'm calling you to be a minister. I'm not calling you to play any keyboard first. I just want you to learn how to serve. A man or a woman who enters marriage and do not know and understand ministering and being a minister will suffer. It's popularly said that pride goes before what? Listen to me, listen to me, listen, listen, and listen very well. You are not even you are not even qualified for greatness if you don't understand the, the, the act and the principle of ministering. If sweeping, for example, the church is a hard thing for you, you can't even serve your generation, you can't even serve your nation, whatever nation you are from. If it's too big for you, if you see an assignment God is giving to you, as I mean, it, this, is, this, is, this is not me now. I'm supposed to be in something. I'm supposed to be leading something. If you don't find a place to serve, the Bible speaks of people in Acts. It says the disciples separated themselves. The Bible says they wanted to minister in the word and in prayer. And it says, I want, I want you to set men to minister to tables. In other words, I want you to give us ushers. Ushers, people that will minister, that will serve food, is in the Bible in Acts. And the people that will serve food, the Bible says one of the criteria, like Pastor Gibson was speaking, qualities of a ready minister, do you have to have the Holy Spirit? It's interesting how God is detailed on how you must serve him. Listen to me, God is a king. If you go to a palace, for example, if you have ever been to any palace in your life, you understand that the kings, they don't just serve them anything. Where I grew up from, for example, the old Emir, if when he tries to spit out, you will see a man will come and put his hand like this for you to spit. He doesn't spit on the ground. This is a man that his flesh is even dead right now. His flesh and blood, though, he can't spit on the ground. You have to put your hand and he will spit. I didn't you? <laughs> hey. If you don't do it, maybe you won't, he, he won't live longer than you, sir. Once he does, oh, you see them. And he's spitting on your hand. Ah, you're wondering. Is a man like you, if you try to spit now, you're like, hey, stop. <laughs> I 
How can a man, he's just an emir, he's not even a president. That's how it, it is in my place. He's not even a president. He's just a traditional ruler. Trying to speak, somebody's bringing their hand. Even I don't want to save our president. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, I can't preach again. People are laughing. Imagine if your president tries to speak. Spit. He says he should spit now. <laughs> I'm using that as an example of honor. Men ready to serve. You are not even... See, some people are serving because they want to become leaders. It's not even a right motive to serve God. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. It's God that looks at a man's heart. He looked at Samuel. He looked at Saul. He told Saul, Samuel, I've rejected this guy. I look at the heart. I'm seeing the motive of his service. The way you are trying to bring it. God is looking at how inside. That is why you see somebody, people will ask questions. Oh, but this guy has been coming to church now. What happened to him? Ah, this sister, this sister. I know her now. And you wonder, is it that God is unfaithful? Is it that God is this? What happened to this? There was a revelation. Somewhere could not see the heart of Saul. He could not. That alone should tell you the supremacy of God. That God can look at a man's heart and judge his qualification. If he's due for promotion. But before you enter the place where you are even due for promotion, you must serve. Big boy and big girl, God doesn't even recognize, he doesn't even know who is big and who is not big. In his eye, until you are faithful to his tasks, you are not even close to being a favorite. Listen to me and learn the qualities of an effective minister. You have to. Aaron, he's calling Aaron. Aaron already is a Christian if we use him in the modern days. But he said, I want you to serve. But before Aaron, like I was saying, we even go into the Holy of Holies. The Bible says he has to put on garments. He has to be prepared. Preparation is not just a, a, a one-time thing. It's a daily thing. If you are in a choir, for example, I'm speaking to our choristers and your ministers. Listen, you are speaking about Aaron. The Bible says Aaron and his sound. Aaron has the had the sound. Aaron's assignment was to speak on behalf of Moses. The only thing he could, he was, God called him, he says, be a mouthpiece. That's all. Aaron had the sound. God recognized that Aaron had the voice. The same way you say Elijah, God is recognizing that this guy has a, a sound for this. When Elijah is playing, God can tell this is, this, is, this is him. When people are serving God in your days and you are idle, Remember the Bible says, he that sows sp sparingly, he that sows abundantly, he that sows, sows in abundance, he said he will reap in abundance. God doesn't, God is very principled. It, the measure to which you serve him is the measure you will bless. I'm, I'm not, it, it, God is not unrighteous, the Bible says, to forget your labor of love. So meaning that he has a day of remembrance when he will call. You can be 62 and he decides that day is your turn. And they bring your book and it's opening. When you were 18 years old, you were in a church and you were in this department. When you were 22... Yeah.